I'm Shelley Carabell, and I'm in San Diego today speaking with Phil Parker. He is the INSEAD Chair Professor of Management Science, and he's invented something that he calls a book writing machine. With apologies to Jonathan Swift, what exactly <laughs> is a book writing machine? Uh, well, basically, it's a software program that imitates or does very similar activities that a normal author would for a general book. Now, I have to be careful. It doesn't write all books. It writes certain very particular types of books. In particular, it's created for genres of books. And those books would be? For the moment, mostly high-end business reports like international benchmark studies, gap analyses, things that normally uh, a CFO, for example, would hire PricewaterhouseCoopers or someone else to do a global benchmark study where you're comparing um, multinational firms' balance sheets and income statements. The problem being, of course, that companies across different economies have different accounting standards. So usually it would take someone a few months to do something like that. And uh, by simply reverse engineering what a financial analyst does, uh, we're able to produce the same type of information in about 20 minutes or so for that one report. It finished the, uh, the basic book, and now it's going to go through quick editing. Quick editing to make sure that things don't dangle across pages, you know, dangling widows and all those kind of classic problems you have in formatting a document. And it's just going down, and it'll keep doing this one after another, doing one thing after another, using macros and, that are uh, mm -hmm. ordered by modules. So that's the basic technology. That's what it does. And at the end of the day, you have a 230-page report that I will then, if I'm confident that it actually makes sense and it's good, um, I will then post that into our distribution channels. And often that's done automatically as well. It's just automatically fed to our channel partners. So the average marginal cost of a title is maybe 12 cents to write a book. 12 cents. 12 cents to 50 cents. It renders the cost of producing within the genre at its literal minimum level. It probably could not go any lower unless I moved to a country that had free electricity. How much money can you actually make doing an economic analysis of the type that you just described? It sounds as How though... How much money can yeah, we make? Probably the market isn't big, but the pockets would have to be pretty deep. I think our highest price reports might go for around $700 each. Within the high-end reports, we often sell full-blown subscriptions to all of the reports. So we have some uh, large governmental and multinational corporations who subscribe to every single report. So sometimes, however, we sell one report at a time I would say the vast majority of the reports don't sell any copies at all. But there's enough that sell to enough people to be able to generate enough income to then create another genre, basically. Do you do your own marketing? Uh, we don't have marketers. We have computer programs who do the marketing for us. So the computer programs write the books, but they also do the marketing as well. They do the distribution. They will actually post uh, Google ad campaigns, and they'll do all of that in an automated fashion. So no, we have no marketing people. Uh, you can go to Amazon.com um, and simply type in uh, various titles and our titles will show up. All of them are printed on demand or POD. So you'll click on an Amazon button when you buy it. An electronic signal is sent to some place in Tennessee. The book is then printed in paperback format. It's put in an envelope and shipped directly to the customer. They don't actually know that it was printed on demand per se. So the business has no inventory at all. So back here is the server panel. It's actually uh, the, the router that lets me know what's blinking. You can see all of the, uh, the activity in the back of the, uh, the computers that are actually running books and running genres or doing cleanup programs or managing databases or creating the metadata that's actually sent and put on Amazon. That's also computer created. Uh, and so all of that's generated. The covers of the books, the spines of the books, all that has to be in the industry standard. And they're creating all of those. It took Phil Parker seven years to get a U.S. patent for his software, method and apparatus for automated authoring and marketing. The project was born in 1992 and took off in 1998, an outgrowth of Parker's former work in electronic publishing. I started doing publishing in the mobile communications industry and I basically had this idea, um, if we can do things in the mobile communications industry, estimating latent demand and other things like that for every city in the United States, What's really the difference between telecommunications and toothpaste, for example? If you want to do 4,000 product categories, uh, that would take an entire building full of analysts. So I proposed to not reduce the cycle from six months to three months, because it would still be too many people. Not from three months to three weeks, that's way too many people. Not three weeks to three days, not three days to three hours, but 30 minutes. So the goal was, how do you write end-to-end -end 
a complete high-end research study within 30 minutes. So first you have to define what a genre is and then write a computer program that actually produces titles within that genre. So there, does every book have a, have you, have a gen, generic type of formula? I mean, can you use this for writing a novel? Uh, you could, but it probably wouldn't be the most profitable area because fiction books generally don't make money. So if you wanted to do it for fiction novels, yes, you'd have to reverse engineer what that genre is. There's always a protagonist and antagonist. Typically you have a, uh, a fairly intelligent woman who is single, who then meets a very intelligent guy, but who has got a little rough edges to him, and by the end of the book, um, there's some kind of conclusion. And it is very formulaic. You have to decide the genre or even the sub-subgenre that you're interested in, and then you develop the application for that subgenre. And then from there, you can generate tens and hundreds of thousands of titles. We literally have more titles than Simon Schuster, Penguin, Addison Wesley, Alan Bacon, uh, Viking, Dutton, um, Simon Schuster, the entire publishing industry combined, actually. Who did you go to first in terms of distribution and what was their reaction? Uh, we have something like 20 distributors, actually. So uh, we have some, uh, some Indian booksellers, we have uh, various European resellers, we have marketresearch.com, which is one of the largest resellers of high-end industry studies, and they sell to most consulting firms and investment banks. I think the timing of what I'm working on is, is fortuitous because a lot of new format platforms exist today that didn't exist 20 years ago. I'm going to be transferring all my NCAD lectures into animated format, and that should happen in the next 18 months. Uh, You're going to create your own animation for yourself? Absolutely. I have a salamander character uh, with a three-dimensional uh, uh, amphitheater based on the Plessy Mornay building at NCAD, and he's giving lectures. Um, INSEAD was nice enough to finance a motion capture suit for me. So this is a $30,000 piece of equipment. INSEAD is a very entrepreneurial place and the deans are very open to new ideas and starting up new activities and this was one of them. And so uh, I did not need to go to, uh, to any venture capitalist. Are you meeting with, for example, the telcos, the movie studios, uh, right the now, online, the Steve Jobs? Have you got him in your date book yet? Uh, no, was... not Steve Jobs. But what I have done is I've talked to some uh, very large entertainment companies who I've only recently shown them this technology actually exists. And they are, uh, let me just put it, um, kind of excited but not quite sure how to get their hands around it. It's not, not clear in my mind how to, how to scale this across companies other than my own. Within my own firm, we just sit around and we decide what to do and we just plow ahead with it. And that's pretty much it. Thanks very much. My pleasure. We've been talking with INSEAD Chair Professor of Management Science Phil Parker in San Diego. I'm Shelley Carabell.